changing bulbs out looks like we'll change the we'll fix the park light problems or tail light problems but not the um, stop light problems you have to access the screws get a little screwdriver underneath that ledge and pop that cap up really need to do it with two hands so it doesn't fly off like that one just did and a magnet on the stick helps you pick the screw up and then we have to just work on pulling it out that one pulled out pretty easy now should be Got to figure out which bulb it is now. Well, we got the, the bulbs twisted out of there. Now we just got to take them out and test them. Like I said, that gives us our park lights working all the way around there. But now we got to move on to stop lights. The brake lights are not working, at least the lower brake lights. Probably just got bad bulbs, so we'll check that out first. And if the bulbs turn out to be okay, we have to look for fuses. And here we go, we have the stop lamp fuse in the underhood fuse box. Here's the stop lamp fuse in the underhood fuse box. I'm going to test it. You see power there. No power there, but if it does it again, you see a little flash in the fuse when I push on it. So that means that circuit is melted in there, but it's very close together. Yep, you can see it's melted, and it's from overheating, and I've run into this problem before. What happens is the bulbs in the back are 7444s and they draw just a little bit too much current. You need to go back to 7443 bulbs. And I'm going to pop a new fuse in there. So we're putting a new fuse in there. That's all seated down. Have power on that side and power on that side. The, inter <clears throat> the interesting thing to me about these bulbs and this fuse are that these bulbs here, they're original to the vehicle or they were updated immediately after the vehicle was bought or 7444 bulbs. All the catalogs say to put 7443 bulbs back in and if you do the math you find out that these bulbs draw all four together draw right at or slightly over the, the current limit of the 10 amp fuse so if you hold your brakes for an extended period of time over years it will eventually melt the fuse out and like I said that fuse is melted right there and it, and it actually melted the, the plastic I'm not sure if we can see that but hopefully you saw when I was taking the the video underneath the hood the arcing where I was pushing on the tabs you can see that right right there where the hoop is it was joined you could join it together and it would arc and there we go brake lights are on and brake light is on you can see the brake light is brighter here and the park light is dimmer here it looks like there could be some bulbs about there too on both sides i'm going to have to ask if they want us to fix that what we're doing is following up on this melted fuse situation. If you look closely at this fuse, you'll see that melted dot right there. Well, that's where the curve and the fuse element go comes to a, a almost a point, which creates a, a centralized heat spot. And that heat spot, of course, attacks the plastic and melts it because in order for the, the element in there to melt, it has to go in excess of 400 degrees. It did melt, it didn't just fracture or split because of a, a sudden surge in amperage. And like I said, each of these bulbs, 
if you can get it lit up. As that surged up to 2 2.42, 2.36, 2.56, 2.25. If you add that all up, you get somewhere between 9 and 10 amps. And the new 7443 bulb, which is the recommended replacement on this vehicle. It draws, it went up to like 0.18 something. So let me get that on there. I thought I saw 1.8 something on there at one point. Um, so anyways, it's below two amps. So you got a little bit of safety cushion there. Hope this helps. Sparky out.